Hello and welcome again to Lexicon Tutorials. Uh, perhaps you remember in my last video I teach you how to ask basic questions about people like their age and nationality and things. In my next video I think I will continue on the same theme, like how to how to interact with people you meet for the first time, like simple dialogues and things. But today I'm going to do something different because I will show you a Swedish poem and I will analyze it quite thoroughly. But I won't do sort of a literal analysis of it. I will only analyze the grammar and sort of why different words are used, the nouns, the different genders of the nouns, and how that affects the adjectives and pronouns and things. Uh, so I will leave the literal analysis to you if you if you want, and if you don't, it's okay, of course. Uh, so yes. Uh, here we have the poem, and I will just simply uncover it sentence for sentence. So we start with the first sentence. Det är fanklart ikväll. And uh, we start to translate all the words. Det, and that is it. Uh, är, and perhaps you have already seen this, probably you have. And it is is er. Fan klart. And this word may seem sort of long. Um, but if you see a long word in Swedish, you shouldn't be intimidated because you can just chop it off in the middle or something and you'll recognize two words. And if you don't know sort of the entire word, you may know some of the of the words that it consists of. So here we have fan, that comes from, from Fana, star, klart, clear. So if it's clear, so you can see the stars. Uh, I suppose it's starry in English. So it is starry. And then we have i kväll. Kväll is evening, and i is, if you put that before like a time of the day in Swedish, it's the same thing as putting two. Uh, before time of the day in English. So today is idag, tomorrow is imorgon. Morgon is morning, so it's like to morning, but it means tomorrow. And uh, inat, tonight is inat. And kväll is, I said it, it is evening, so it's like to evening, if you could have said that in English. But I think the closest translation is tonight. And uh, you can see it's a, a T here. This is an adjective. And it's a T in the end. And that means it's referring to a neuter, neuter noun. Because you remember all the adjectives, they used to... They often end with a T if they're referring to a neuter noun. And here we have no noun in this sentence. But we have a, a pronoun it. And of course we have two pronouns, one for the neuter nouns and one for the common nouns. So it's like uh, depending on, on the noun that it's referring to. But here's, here it's not really referring to any noun. Like it's in English, it is raining. I mean, what it? It's just it. It is raining. It is cold. It is warm. It is bad. It's like just a simple abstract it. And this very abstract it, it's always det. So it's always the neuter form in English, in Swedish, sorry. So it's always like it is warm, det är varmt. Uh, it is cold, det är kallt. It is starry tonight. So then we have the, the next sentence. Luften är ren och kall. And luft, that is air. And I hope you remember that if you put, uh, if you want to make a common noun, uh, definite, you just put en in the end, instead of the in, in front of the word. So the air is luften. So vi är, luften är, is, ren, clean, och, and, 
Hull code. And you can see they have no T's because it's the common noun. So luften är ren och kall. The air is clean and cold. And then you have uh, måne, that is moon. And an N in the end makes it definite singular because it is a uh, common noun as well. Månen söker. And that is search, to search in present tense. So the moon searches hos. And that is a word that doesn't exist in English, but it's like a prepos preposition, I suppose. Uh, like, I mean, if, if you live with your parents, or like in someone's house, then you live hos them. Or if you can see sort of uh, a trait in some species or something, you can see this hos then arten or something. So it's like with or in and things like that. But if you speak German, it's it's simple because then it's like by in German, like ich wohne bei meiner Eltern. So it's like. Uh, Yes, you know it if you're German. Um, alla, that's all. Ting. And that's thing. Uh, because, um, I mean, in Swedish we have two words for thing. And the most common is sak. Or sake in plural. Um, but we also have this word thing. And you can recognize it. It's very similar to the, the English word thing. You could just skip the H between the T and the I, so you have Swedish word here. And it is uh, neuter. And do you remember that almost all neuter nouns that ends in a consonant are the same in undef indefinite singular and indefinite plural? So en sak, that is ett ting, no, sorry, <laughs> one thing is a thing, and uh, here you can see it's it's uh, definitely uh, plural because it's the word all, so it has to be plural, but it's the same, it's alla thing. So, I mean, you can only understand that it's plural from, from this because it could have been like singular. Månen söker hos alla ting, the moon is searching all things. Sitt förlorade arv. It's lost heritage. And uh, sitt, that is its in Swedish. It could also be hers and or her or his. Um, we have three different, uh, three other words for uh, its and hers and his, and that is hans, hennes, des. Uh, so it could be sort of confusing for people learning Swedish. I mean, when to to use the word sit, and when to use like hans. And it it is actually quite easy if you just uh, learn it because um, I mean, if you translate the sentence, she is speaking to her child into Swedish. You can uh, translate it into two different sentences that means different things. So, uh, for the word her, you can either use sit, or you can use hennes. So if you say, uh, hon pratar med sitt barn, then you mean, uh, like, this woman is speaking to her own child. But if you say, hon pratar med hennes barn, then she is speaking to someone else's child, another woman's child. So, sit means that it's like, um, it's its own, or her own, or his own. So, the moon is searching for his own uh, heritage, and not someone else's heritage. Um, and uh, sit is referring to a noun, and things that are referring to nouns, they can sort of change depending on the gender. And arv, heritage. 
that is neuter and sit has two t's in the end so if it would have been a common noun it would have been sin uh, and if it would have been plural it would have been sina ett fönster en blommande gren and here what gender is this word great it's neuter and it's window we have taken that from german fönster fönster ett fönster a window en blommande gren a blossoming branch so you can see uh, n here is referring to branch gren so you can see gren is common blommande blossoming and i mean in english you have the verb blossom and then to make it a verb if you want to describe a noun that blossoms then uh, you say blossoming and if you do this in swedish you put a n d e blommande and these adjectives don't change so it i mean if the window window would have been blossoming it would have been ett blommande fönster so it's the same for both the the neuter and the common and the, and the plural that it, it det you can see it's the, the same sort of abstract neuter it det är is nog enough like if you take enough and you take away the the e the u and the age it becomes nog so that's easy to remember and that is enough ingen blom utan jord um, ingen is no but in swedish we have different words for the word no depending on the sort of context and uh, if no refers to a noun like no that is no bird or that is no human being whatever um, then it is ingen um, and it is referring to a noun things that are referring to nouns used to change and uh, ingen is no exception ingen är inget undantag uh, so it's ingen when it's referring to a, a common noun uh, ingen blom no blossom um, if it would have been neuter it would have been inget if it would have been uh, plural it would have been inga that is also a name anyway um, ingen blom utan without jord earth or like earth like in english it could be like earth the planet earth or like earth soil so no no blossom without earth and no earth without rymd that is space ingen jord utan rymd no earth without space and i'm not going to translate the last sentence because you are going to translate it yourself because you know already all words in it so you'll be able to do that ingen blom utan jord ingen jord utan rymd ingen rymd utan blom So I'm going to read it through in in Swedish. Det är färnklart ikväll. Luften är ren och kall. Månen söker hos alla ting. Sitt förlorade arv. Ett fönster, en blommande gren. Och det är nog. Ingen blom utan jord. Ingen jord utan rymd. Ingen rymd utan blom.